recording here. I have several things to talk to you guys about today, mostly about getting you guys ready for the, uh, getting you guys ready for the AP exam. This is our last class before, official class before you guys take the AP exam on Tuesday. Um, so I've got a few things that are getting ready to post just um, at 1045 this morning um, that I thought were helpful for you. <clears throat> one of um, a lot of them are things that I've posted already and I just kind of tried to put them all in one place so that you guys could find them easily and quickly. Um, but one of them is the demo. If you haven't done the demo yet, um, you definitely should do that. Um, it's just a kind of practice logging in, um, practice um, submitting your answers the way you'll be submitting them on the day of the AP exam and um, and just kind of getting a feel for what that timing feels like and what it feels like to submit and that kind of thing. Um, so if you have not done that yet, that is absolutely critical before you take the AP exam. For one, you need to make sure everything works. Um, and then for another, you need to, um, you know, practice how you're going to be doing it if you're planning on writing it um you know just kind of practicing how that goes and i do have a few tips on that um, another thing that i posted um or that we'll be posting today is the um, one of the episodes that um, mark and verge do for you guys that i did not assign to you guys it kind of walks through the um the big um the slideshow that I shared with you guys last week it kind of walked you through that and talked you through it. So I think that's really helpful. Um, you don't have to watch the entire video, but it takes about 15, 20 minutes just to kind of hear them walk you through it. Um, they have some real important reminders. Um, they'll probably say some of the things that I say today, but they'll probably have other things that I, um, that I miss. Um, and again, just hearing it from different people, I think is, is really useful for you too, to make sure that you're, getting everything um, ready that you need to have ready for that. Um, let's see. Also available, I don't know that I posted it yet, but um, they have some kind of practice AP exams for you guys to take. They started posting those this week. So if you go into that AP Live, the YouTube channel in AP Live, you can find um, on Monday, May 4th, they, they do uh, like a mock AP exam where you'll have two questions, just like your AP exam will be this year. Um, and, you know, they give you, they have you sit there and have a timer going and they have the questions so you can actually kind of practice doing it like that, which is good. Um, and you might want to use that um, when you do the, the demo to kind of try submitting that just to see how that feels. Um, so again, I think that's, that's going to be useful. They have two of those. Um, one of them posted on Monday, the other one posts today. So I don't know if that one's actually available just yet, but it will be soon. Um, this is all totally optional. You don't have to do any of it, but I think it would be something that would really prepare you well for the AP exam on Tuesdays by doing a little practice. Um, so anyway, just kind of wanted to throw that out there as um, some things that would be helpful um, for uh, getting you ready for the AP exam. Um, let's see, I wanted to take a couple minutes too to talk about what we're going to do after you guys take the AP exam. Um, after you guys take the AP exam, I know people are going to be busy with other AP exams and so I don't, I'm I'll probably have a class next Wednesday still, but it's not going to be a required thing. You don't have to show up. If you could just um, maybe check in with me at some point, maybe next week I'll put out like a little, you know, a little question and you can just respond to that and that will be your attendance for next week or something just so that you guys can kind of check in and let me know how the AP exam went. If you are not taking the AP exam, I would like you guys to come to next Wednesday's class. Um, I will talk in more detail about the calculus project, which is what we'll be doing after the AP exam. Um, and so I will record that. So, you know, you, if you are not coming to the class next week because you're busy taking AP exams, you can just watch that later. Um, and I'll probably keep it pretty short too. Um, but at any rate, I will post the information about the calculus project um, probably today or tomorrow. So anybody that is not taking the AP exam can get started on that. 
Um, it is worth 100 points, so it's something that can really bring up your grade if that's something you need. Um, and then there will be a final exam after the calculus project, which is just going to be on questions that are um, that are asked by each presentation. In each presentation, there are questions that are going to be asked. And so the, the, your final exam, I'm actually probably going to make a Kahoot. So it'll be just kind of a fun thing. Um, but it'll be questions on each of the presentations. So um, and those calculus projects, just so that you can kind of start brainstorming what you might want to do is supposed to be on something that you're interested in and talk about how math applies to it. Um, and next week, I'll probably kind of walk you guys around the room and show you some of the posters of previous um, projects. But you can do um, you can do mathematicians. Um, you can do you know stuff about surfing or um, just anything that you're interested in and talk about how um, how math applies to it. Not even necessarily calculus. So. Um, I do want to take a couple minutes to talk about um, the related rate circuit. There were a lot of questions about that. And so I will take just a couple minutes to talk about that. Um, and let's see. And then again, I just have a few things to talk about to kind of get you guys ready for the AP exam. So I'm doing real good on time here. So I'm going to talk about the, the circuit first. So if you are here and not taking the uh, AP exam, you could, um, you know, maybe check out after that at that point. So let me get this, this guy all, all warmed up and ready to go here. Um, so I have, again, if you have it um, out and near you, you could certainly look at, um, look at it with me right now. But this is the, this is the circuit that was actually uh, due yesterday, right? We have three assignments this week. One was unit five that was due yesterday. Uh, unit six is due tomorrow. Um, and then the unit um, one through seven kind of uh, review of all units one through seven, that one's due on Friday. Um, in the video that they do, um, they don't get through all seven units. Um, and so you may want to watch the next episode and you can go on to AP Live to help you kind of do a quick review of each of the topics because um, they don't actually get to each of the, um, the different units. Um, so you don't have to do that, but that is something that will help you to complete the work that I assigned to you is if you um, tune into that next episode there. Um, okay, so uh, I made some notes to myself on this. Can you guys see it okay? I'll zoom in a little bit more. I know it's hard to see on the document camera here. So um, there are a few problems that are exactly the same. So for example, a spherical balloon is being filled. Um, and just to kind of talk about that real quickly, when it talks about a spherical balloon being filled with gas at a rate of blah, 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 that is um, that rate of change is a rate of the volume changing, right? If the balloon is being filled, it's the volume that's going to be changing. So that rate is a change of the volume. Um, one thing that I missed when I did these was at the bottom of each question, of each of those types of questions anyway, is the actual question. Okay, so what is DADT? And then here is another one of those spherical balloon problems. And this is asking for DRDT. And then on the back side, another one of those spherical balloon problems way down here. Um, and this is actually the first of the three of them um, is asking for um, DVDT. Well, they tell you what DVDT is in the problem. You just have to be able to read it. You don't actually have to do any math there. So. Um, if you do go through the circuit and you do it in order, it will help you because like the answer to this spherical balloon problem helps you with the answer to this spherical balloon problem. I even made myself a, a little note there that you need the formula for volume of a sphere. Um, and then that one will help you with the other spherical balloon problem over here. Um, and again, I wrote that in this one, you'll need that the um, surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. And that's something that you can look up yourself too. Um, but uh, at any rate, um, same thing with the conical pile problems. And I thought I would just tell you guys kind of the order that those go in just because I think that that is helpful. 
Um, so this conical pile of sand problem here is the first one. Um, the second one is on the front page. This one here that asks for DVDT. If you do that one second, it helps you to find the third one, which is below the first one here um, on the back there. So, um, so that it, it helps, I think, to kind of know the order that those go in. Um, so hopefully that helps with that. So that's kind of some helpful tips on um, the assignment that was due yesterday. Um, and like I said, the one that's due on Friday, you may actually want to watch a little bit of the next episode um, to be able to complete that one. Um, okay, so now I'm going to go back to you talking about the AP exam a little bit more and just give you guys some, um, some things to think about to kind of get you guys ready. Um, uh, let's see. Um, one thing that, you, that you're going to want to keep in mind is you have, um, they say you have 30 minutes for the first problem and they say you have 20 minutes for the second problem, but you really need to keep in mind that it's actually, even though they say 30 minutes, it's 25 minutes for the problem because you absolutely need the five minutes to submit your answers, especially if you're going to be taking pictures of multiple pages and submitting the pictures of those multiple pages. So when that timer turns red, you should make sure you stop working on the problem and start submitting your answers. Because even if, you're, even if your answer isn't finished and it's partially completed, you're likely to get points on what you have partially completed there. Whereas if you don't get it submitted on time, you're not gonna get any points at all. Okay, so keep that in mind. As soon as that timer turns red, stop working start taking pictures and submitting those responses or start copying and pasting or however it is that you decide to submit your responses. And again, you really should practice. Use that demo to practice submitting to make sure that's the way you'd like to do it. Some people may change their mind and decide they want to type it, although I kind of doubt it. I think that it's going to be hard to show the work that you're doing while you're typing it all. So I think um, that most of you guys are probably going to be benefited most by um, handwriting. They do say to make sure to use um, either a dark pen or a dark pencil. So if you are somebody that tends to write lightly, um, get a darker pencil or maybe think about using a pen. Um, but they, you know, they're going to need to be able to see a picture of it. Um, and I don't know, I kind of don't think you're going to be able to scan them like I've had you guys do. So that's something to definitely practice. I think that they actually have to be pictures because they say they have to be either a PNG, a JPJ, or a JPEG file. Um, and so keep that in mind, practice. You may be able to do the scan, um, but that's definitely something to try ahead of time. So look into that for sure. Um, I know a lot of you guys um, have figured out great ways to do the scanning. And so um, if you can figure out how to make that work, um, I think that that makes it easier for them to read. So give that a try, see what works for you. A um, couple of things to keep in mind about writing your responses besides just making sure that it's dark so that they can see it. Um, if you have an iPhone and you are taking pictures, they say to turn off the live pictures on your, on your iPhone because it's not going to be the right type of file. If it's a live photo, then it's like an HEIC or something. I don't know what that means. Um, so that's definitely something to look into. Um, and again, if you are writing your responses, you are going to be using either a tablet or a phone. And so you will want to turn off the like automatic lock so that it doesn't fall asleep on you. That would be bad, right? I mean, you can wake it back up, but you know, what if you have to restart everything? So that's something to, um, you know, make sure you disable the go to sleep or the automatic lock thing. Um, make sure you turn off the live photos if you have an iPhone. Um, make sure that everything is all charged up. If you have a calculator that needs to be charged, or if you want to get some fresh batteries to set aside just in case your batteries die on your calculator. Um, in normal years, I will always send extra batteries to the location where 
you guys would be taking your AP exam um, as a backup and people have had to use them before. So, um, you know, be prepared in that way. Have those calculators charged up, have your phones or tablets charged up or just have them plugged in because if it, you know, shut down because it lost power, then, you know, that would, that would be bad. Um, make sure to you talk to everybody in your house let them know you're going to be taking an ap exam make sure they know they shouldn't be using the um the wi-fi in your house during the 50 minutes that you're taking the ap exam um just just to make sure that there's no issues with uh losing the wi-fi um because again that would be bad um let's see da, 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 da. this friday is the last of the AP lives. So that's, this one's not available yet because it hasn't been, it hasn't happened yet. Um, but uh, if, if it was me, I would watch that one because the um, Mark and Verge are going to go through and they're going to talk about some tips for the AP exam. Um, they're super experienced calculus teachers. They've been readers for years. So they're going to know a lot of ins and outs and will probably have some really helpful information for you guys. Um, and so I think that's going to be one that that would be worth watching. And again, that's going to be available on Friday. And I will probably, I'll watch it myself because I'm a dork like that. And um, I'll probably um, post the link in Google Classroom to kind of remind you guys too. But um, just in case I don't, make yourself a note um, to watch that for those, those last minute tips and, um, and whatnot. Um, you guys should have all gotten on Monday, May 4th. So Monday, just two days ago, you should have gotten an email, a confirmation email from the AP exam. So if you haven't checked for that, um, make sure you check for that. Um, but that's kind of the confirmation, making sure that you're going to get that e-ticket two days before the AP exam. So, um, so look for that email that should have come through on May 4th. Um, Everybody that responded to my survey last week said that they were getting emails from the college board about AP stuff. So I think you guys should have gotten it. I just want to, um, you know, have you guys double check. Did you get that confirmation email? Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to talk about was just kind of my own um, little spiel that um, that I like to give before the AP exam. Um, that you guys should keep in mind that you know what you know at this point. Um, you shouldn't stress out over this weekend and overstudy. I would probably spend some time studying, but don't overstudy. Um, on Monday, make sure you get a good night's sleep. Make sure you eat a good breakfast on Tuesday morning. Um, make sure your brains are relaxed. If you're studying super hard on Monday, um, your brains may not be relaxed um, to let all of that information flow through on Tuesday. So keep all those things in mind. Do some studying, but don't do any overstudying. You know what you know at this point. Um, on that note of knowing what you know, when you are taking the test and you come across problems that you don't feel great about, don't spend a lot of time on those. Move on to other parts that maybe you can do better. Um, so, so keep that in mind. You know what you're good at right now. Really make sure, and I can't say this enough, really make sure you spend your time on the ones that you know how to do, okay? Um, make sure you are reading the problems very carefully. If you have time, I would make sure after you finish a problem that you go back and reread the question again to make sure that you've answered the question, to make sure that you have all the different parts of the answer. Um, and as you're going through the problems and making sure, um, just making sure that you're paying attention, this is the function f of x and f of x tells me this is the rate of change, you know, really making sure you're reading what each function is telling you. If it's a graph, making sure you know that that graph is the graph of the function or that graph is the function of the derivative. So you really know what it is that you're working with. Um, one thing that I don't know about yet, they keep saying that you will be able to print the questions, um, but I haven't figured out how yet. And I've actually sent an email into the college board to figure out how, and I will share that with you guys when I find out how. 
I don't think it's necessary to print it, um, but I think it would be really helpful to have a printed copy so that you could go through and underline things that are important um, to make a note that, you know, this is the derivative, this is the function, and what those tell you about each other. If it's the derivative, I know if the derivative is positive, the function is increasing, and just writing yourself little notes about that. Um, so hopefully I will get some information about how to print that if any of you guys are interested in it, but I think that if it was me, I would want to print them. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, you guys are all really, really smart. You guys are all prepared for this. You're gonna do great. So go into this relaxed and confident and just really make sure you nail the stuff that you know, okay? Um, and that's kind of what I have for today. So I am going to kind of open this up to questions that you guys might have at this point, whether those questions are about the AP exam or about stuff that we're working on this week. Um, what do you guys, what kind of questions do you have? Let's start with AP exam questions. Does anybody have any questions about the format or, um, or anything like that? You just um, yourself and jump I in. just have a question about like, it's not even a question. I'm just stressing now and I'm like, okay, it's at 11 like AM right on Tuesday. Okay. And we check in at 1030, like 30 minutes before. Okay. I just wanted to double check, just kind of get my reassurance. Okay. Totally. I, I, I hear you, Sarah. And I will definitely send something out on Monday too, as a reminder. Um, and I would recommend making sure you have an alarm set for Tuesday morning. And yeah. then if you have a backup plan, somebody in the house comes to get you too. But yes, it is, <laughs> it is 11 a.m. on Tuesday of next week. And you need to be checking in starting at 1030 because I think that the check-in process is going to take a little while for sure. So. And like two days before the exam, they're supposed to email us our ticket thing, right? Correct. You'll get that e-ticket two days before. And if for some reason you don't get that e-ticket two days before, then you will have access to it if you go to, um, to my AP, where we've done the AP classroom stuff this year. Okay. So you can always go there. And on that note too, I saw something somewhere that they do have some um, practice AP questions there in, um, in AP classroom too, if anybody's looking for another resource for kind of what it's gonna feel like to take the AP exam this year. Good question, Sarah. <laughs> Anybody else? Got to pause for a really long, awkward silence just in case somebody thinks of something. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so I will uh, let you guys at this time then turn on your video, unmute yourself, say goodbye. If you have questions, stick around. And I have another uh, 10 minutes before I have to leave for my next class. So if you have questions, stick around. Otherwise. Bye, Ms. Grassel. Bye, Sarah. Bye. 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 Bye, Ms. Grassel. Bye, Sophia. I don't want to see Mark or Verge ever again. Bye, Ms. Grassel. You don't want to see whoever? Oh, Mark or Verge. <laughs> <laughs> I understand, but I think they've been really helpful too. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, but still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Verge's jokes get a little irritating. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, oh, God, another one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Hello. Maggie, Cassidy, you guys are still here. Do you have questions I can help with? Yes, on the related rates circuit, there are a couple problems that I'm trying to solve and I just am like, where am I going wrong with these? I don't get it. So, All right. um, my first one is on the first page with the answer to, it's like in the second column, the third question down. Apply the mean value theorem. Yes. So let me kind of talk you through that because there was, I ran into an issue at one point on this. So you find your average rate of change. Mm -hmm. You probably got 20. Mm -hmm. And then you yes. find your derivative, 24x minus mm -hmm. 3x squared. 
And then you have to see where those two things are equal to each other. Mm -hmm. Well, this is one where you're going to use a calculator because there's no way to set it equal to zero and factor it. I thought, well, I'll use the quadratic formula, but because you're going to have access to a calculator, you should definitely use it in that part of the problem. So if you would like, yeah. I would be happy to talk you through what steps to go through to do that. But it's something that I do by graphing the 24x minus 3x squared in like y1 and then the 20 and y2 and then see where they intersect. That makes sense because as I was trying to do this, I was like, why is it? Why is it so difficult to? And that was one of the ones that I got that was outside of the original circuit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cassidy, did you have a question or are we just hanging out? I'm just listening. Sounds I always good. stay and wait for people to ask questions in case like I have the same question. Good. I like it. Okay, that makes sense. So the zero is at point nine four. Correct. Five. Right. Okay. If Cassie doesn't have a question then, I'll ask another one I had on that okay. back page. Um, it's like the first question on the second column. Okay. Answer negative eight. Answer on answer twelve, the one next to it. Oh right, on the right column. Gotcha. Okay. So to find the point of inflection, I'm going to want where the derivative has a critical number because that's where f of, the, that's where the second derivative is going to equal zero, correct? So you find or, the second derivative and see where the second derivative is zero, right? Points of inflection are places where the concavity changes. And so that mm -hmm. would happen where that second derivative is zero. Yes. So, second derivative, set it equal to zero because it tells you there's a point of inflection at x equals two, you will plug the two into the x and that'll allow you to solve for the k value there. Yes. Okay, so it'll be zero. It'll be zero equals 12, two squared, and then. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. I think I had a similar problem with the one and that has answer four in the first column, like a couple questions down. Okay. Where I found that x equals two, where there's a point of inflection, mm -hmm. and I plugged it back into the original equation, and I'm I wasn't sure if I was supposed to plug it back into. Um, you do. It's asking for the y coordinate of the point. That point is on the function. And so mm -hmm. you would, in fact, um, plug that into the function. The two, you plug the two into the y function. Yeah. I got the answer is negative eight, and I didn't see that that was a. <laughs> That that was an option, but I'm looking again, and that is an option. So yep. I guess I just had the right answer and didn't see it. Um, okay. okay, never mind. Yeah, there was a problem with that one. Um, and that's another one was, outside of that original circuit too, right? Yes, I think. And this is just to clarify, but the one at the very, very bottom of the first column with the answer twenty is the answer is just. 12. It is. Right. <laughs> it took me so long to figure that out. Too. I'm like, oh, what's going on? Yes. Yeah. And just get. Because that was like my first instinct was to just go to that. And then I was like, why would they just give us the answer? Okay. Yeah. Looks like I'm good on that then. I'm going to try and do the unit six review. But if I don't get it done before office hours today, I'll check in tomorrow if I have any questions. No problem. It. Sounds good. Thank you, Ms. Grassle. Bye. Bye, Bye, Cassidy. Bye, Maggie.